In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to create Zek King's projection mapping illusion that turns a physical object seamlessly into a flat projection. Today, I wanna be Zek King for a day, which is quite challenging when you don't have a professional team behind you like he has. Wait, I have a professional team? Sure. <laughs> Lulu, could you please jump for me? Sure. And? Does this look like Banksy for you? Not quite! Okay, let me skate a bit. Oh man, you gotta be kidding me. Yes. Lulu, I'm gonna catch you. What the? Hi guys, I just wanted to tell you that my costume was because of Carnival Season Germany, Fasching's Sonntag, No Comic Con, and thanks for watching. Dad, there's something wrong with the car and I don't know what. So what's actually wrong with the car? I can stand on it. I, I didn't even climb. I'm just kind of standing on it. What's happening? Is the world that normal? Coffee. What? Okay, one more try. Got it. At least it doesn't have a flat taste. The scenes we made are a tribute to the great Zek King, who uses camera mapping or projection mapping extensively in his specific videos. Of course, unlike in our shots, his storytelling is more elaborate and his videos meticulously planned shot with a lot of takes. But the camera mapping technique he uses to turn physical objects seamlessly into flat projections is much easier than you think. It's so easy, easier than any projection mapping technique I've seen in After Effects, that this tutorial would be over within a minute. But how to shoot your footage is not less important. That's why I also want to show you some ideas on how you could prepare your footage to lay the groundwork for creating Zack King's projection magic. The easiest way to get a seamless cut is to put your camera on a tripod so that you have all the time in the world to remove the object. Though it might be hard for the protagonist to freeze the poster if it takes too long. So what's actually wrong with the car? In Premiere Pro, I extracted the part where I hit the car, making the cut just shortly before I lift the camera. Because the cut wasn't 100% seamless, I first tried to use a morph cut transition to reduce the jump cut, with a subpar result. But it was a good reference for me regarding the pose of my kit, so I set an in and out point around the morph cut and exported it with import into project, checked for automatic import. Then I put the rendered morph sequence into the timeline, selected all the clips and chose replace with After Effects composition to continue the edit there. In After Effects, I masked my kit, divided her into different parts, I know, it sounds cruel, in order to animate them individually. The main body with a puppet tool and the remaining limbs with position and rotation animation until they closely matched the target pose. To fine tune it, I changed the blending mode to difference. I knew that when it was almost black, it closely matched the target pose. To cover up the hard jump, for example in the head, I overlaid it with the rendered morph cut from Premiere Pro. As the clouds also changed over time, you could see them jump in the sky and in the windows. So I took the windows and the sky, which I freezed from the first frame after the cut, in order to use them as a replacement in the sequence before the cut. This was easier to accomplish than replacing the sky after the cut where the camera moved, what would have required some extra tracking work. After these fixes, I had my seamless cut and the sequence ready to apply the camera projection to. Not perfect, but it made the cut less obvious. Shooting with a fast-moving or handheld camera instead comes more natural and credible because you can easily cover up the jumpings. But making the camera movement seamless is a bit more challenging. The principle is the same. First, you freeze your camera movement and remove the object from the camera view. Nee, weiter, zurück, zurück. 
Okay, alles klar. But don't just proceed from here. Instead, make a step back and then continue your Man, camera you movement. You might shoot a few more takes to have more to choose from in the editing process in order to find the matching frame. In After Effects, split the footage layer at the time you like the projection mapping to begin and extend the bottom layer by one frame. Then find the matching frame of the clip where the object has been already removed and where the camera movement is at high speed. I always change the blending mode to difference, which helps me find a matching frame. Shift the top layer until the screen is almost black, which indicates that the frames closely match. You might also scale, rotate or use the corner pin effect to make them match better. If gaps occur at the borders, you can apply a transform effect to an adjustment layer and increase the scale. Split the top layer, delete the layer before the split and keep the layer here extended by this one frame to overlap the frame below. We'll need this extra frame for later tracking. Then check if the camera movement is seamless for you. Looks good here. And now that we are well prepared, we can come to the fun part of this tutorial and apply the actual magic technique. And depending on your footage, the one and the same technique can be approached differently. And this skate sequence we're at right now is perfect to show you the faster approach first. And this is the case when the projection surface, here it's the floor, is more or less facing the camera. Duplicate the bottom layer, put it on top, freeze frame the last frame of it, mask it, split the layer at this point, delete the part before the split and extend the layer until the end of the composition. Then camera track the layer below. At this point select at least three tracking points and create a solid and a camera. Try to match its position to the masked object. It doesn't have to cover the object completely. Check if tracking got rock solid for you. Looks good for me here. Next, make the masked object layer a 3D layer and copy-paste position and rotation values from the solid layer to the object layer. Now we have to match the masked skateboard with the skateboard in the layer before the cut. Now comes the magic trick. First, make sure that the masked object layer is on the very top of your timeline, like here. Apply a CC power pin effect to it, again you can change the blending mode to difference and drag its pins to the composition's corners. Try to be as precise as possible. This is the case when the object is almost totally black in difference mode. Change blending mode back to normal and hit play and ta-da! How easy was that? The skateboard is now projected to the floor. To make it more seamless, I applied a drop shadow effect before the power pin effect. Because the skateboard didn't stop where my feet landed, I animated the object layer to meet them. And finally, I rotor brushed my legs and created a transition to blend the skateboard into the asphalt. And it looked like this. Hey, let me skate a bit. Oh man, you gotta be kidding me. The other approach is a bit fiddlier, but as easy as the first one. The difference is that we're gonna use the CC power pin effect a bit differently in situations where the projection surface is rather looking down, or in this case, upwards against the camera. Here I already camera tracked the footage, created a camera and a solid, and masked the car from the last frame before the cut. It's crucial that the solid has to have the same aspect ratio as your footage, which is 16 to 9 in my case. So I changed the solid size to 3840 by 2160 pixels. With duplicated solids, I reconstructed the geometry of the projection surface. When you want to change the size, I recommend to adjust the scale and not the solid size values to later restore the original aspect ratio. And make sure that the solids cover the complete object you want to project. This and this plane are facing the camera. So we can use the same technique like I've shown you in my first approach. At the first frame after the cut, make the car layer 3D. Copy paste the solids rotation and position values into it, apply a CC power pin effect to it and move the pins to the composition's corners. Be as accurate as possible. Then you can use the solid as a track mat to limit the projection. I also applied the same technique to the curb. 
The floor is a bit trickier. If you used the same technique, the pins wouldn't even reach the composition's corners, even if you tried hard. Somehow, this layer angle doesn't allow it. So, how do we solve it? Simply by using the same technique, but invert it. You'll see. Revert the car layer to a 2D layer and reset its transform attributes to get the initial state. Move the pins to the solid's corners and try to do it accurately as well. The red bounding box is a good guide. Then check the 3D layer again and copy-paste the solid's position and rotation attributes into it. And now here's the secret tip. Go to CC Power Pin and click on Unstretch. How cool is that? This makes camera projection fun in After Effects. Then again, use the solid as a track mat to restrict the projection to the floor. Same technique applies to the sidewalk. But here, duplicate the solid first and reset the scale to restore the original aspect ratio. Then reset the object layer and warp it to match the solid. After checking the 3D checkbox, copy-pasting the solid's position and rotation values into it, and checking Unstretch, use the downscaled solid as a track mat. Finally, rotor brush your protagonist, and Zack King's projection illusion is perfect. And with some compositing refinements, it looked like this. So what's actually wrong with the car? I can stand on it. I mean, I didn't even climb. I'm just kind of standing on it. What's happening? Okay, that's it, guys. See you next time. Lulu, I'm gonna catch you.